Welcome, Spartans, to Halo TV Plus, part of Evolve, your home for Halo. I'm your host, Orin, and on Halo TV Plus, my guests and I recap Halo's original TV show, Halo the Series, and discuss its contents and unique canon within its silver timeline. Joining me again to discuss Episode 6, Solace, is David Arnold. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, Orin. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. So as you know, Halo TV Plus produces a commentary episode and an analysis episode to accompany the Halo the Series episode of the week. This is the analysis episode. In a moment, David and I will highlight key scenes from Solace and discuss the effectiveness on screen while adding core canon knowledge for context. Earlier in the week, we released a commentary episode for Solace where we discussed the whole episode while watching it. If you missed it, I recommend listening to that episode first before listening to our analysis but it's up to you. Let me do some housekeeping before we dive in. If you're new to the show, welcome. Halo TV Plus is part of Evolved that hosts a variety of other Halo shows, such as Podcast Evolved, Mission Debrief, Builds with Blocks, Halo Book Club, and Halo Headlines. Evolved also partners with the podcast HCS Pro Talk, where Josh and Will discuss the latest information within the competitive Halo scene, with an emphasis on the community every week. You can learn more about each show on our website, EvolvedHalo.com. As Halo TV Plus is a new show, I ask that you rate it and leave a review. I greatly appreciate all the feedback and suggestions from you, the listeners, to improve the quality of this show. I would also like to take a moment to thank all of our patrons for their continued support. Your contributions allow us to continue making new content each and every week. Thank you guys so, so much. If you're not subscribed, our patrons receive a variety of exclusive rewards, such as early episodes, unique swag, access to our podcast soundtrack, and more. You can head over to patreon.com slash Halo Evolved to learn more. Now to give our synopsis and episode details again for Solace. Survivors of the battle with the Covenant return to Reach. John confronts Dr. Halsey and her lies. A new prisoner seems to know John better than he knows himself. And the mysterious artifact shows John something startling. The director is Jonathan Leisman. The runtime is 48 minutes and 36 seconds and it originally aired on April 28th, 2022. All right, so, David, this episode is heavily focused on John. I mean, you could argue that a lot of the episodes are. He's the main character, of course. But John, up to this point, definitely has been going on a journey, a, a tra- almost a transformation. He's, he's learning about his past. He's discovering new things about himself. And I, th- I kind of think it ultimately builds to this episode, would you say? Oh, for sure. I, I love this journey. I mean, uh, let's say overall, I'm not in love with this show. I like it a lot, but there's elements within it that I do love. And the main one is their portrayal of John, this character, this arc. I love it. Paolo is awesome. Or is it it's Paolo Scriber, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that's how you say his name. Uh, I think he's incredible. I think he- I love... I just love John's arc here. He is where I want John to be in the main canon. I want to see emotions. I thought John should be here by now by Halo Infinite. Like, could you imagine this John playing through Halo Infinite? Like, <laughs> what, what about a different game that would be? So I love it. Uh, I, I think he's fantastic. And I, li- I love where the story went with him. His, the drama. Oh my God, the drama in this episode, Oren. It's, it's, it's tasty. I love it. I, I mean, I think like... I was a big fan of like episode one and like where we just immediately jump into the humanity. Like I've, I've heard some feedback where people would have been like, oh, it would have been nice if like this story was season two and season one, we get a little bit more of like what we know Chief is with like the, you know, being a machine and all that. And I'm like, no, I like, I kind of liked how we just jumped off from the deep end. Right. And over the last couple of episodes, it really has been building to like this moment. Now, not to say that his journey is complete like that, you know, we still have three more episodes and who knows what happens in like future seasons and such. But like to to trust McKee and to go to the artifact and like succumb to it, which eventually projects himself onto the ring. I just like not only is it the ring, you know, like that moment in and of itself was like big, but like I just feel like we finally have made progress. Whereas the last couple of episodes, I there there has been a little bit of some stagnation and it's just kind of like more of the same, I would say. But like we 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 see Chief kind of like really taking charge of trying to figure out what is going on and battling with the artifact of him like seemingly kind of like sucking the life out of him almost. So 
to just build up to this episode to me like I just I just found this episode just be super rewarding I've said it before I think it's my favorite episode so far and I I'm just really excited to where they go next definitely one great moment that happened in here which we touched on in the commentary was John kind of testing the limits of Cortana oh what a scene we 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 talked kind of just throughout it throughout it but I just wanted to touch on again I want to see more of, of like that chief to like take command of like a situation like that and just in other settings because we, we've seen it a little bit in some of the action sequences and he's kind of been you know more on the I'm trying to learn what's going on so there's not much action I can kind of take but like in this scene like he he he's very he shows you the intelligence of the Spartan and I think you kind of touched on that as well of like how kind of calculated that he can be and that he does everything very deliberately and so I, I want to see kind of where that takes him going forward to kind of see just more of that now that he kind of learns some more with like the ring and his connection with McKee. Like, like, how do you think, you know, or like with, with the other Spartans, for an example, like, like, where do you see John kind of like taking charge kind of like going forward now that we've established the ring and, and we are getting this dynamic between him and, and Kai and him and McKee, and then he's even getting closer to Miranda now that Miranda has ownership of the Spartan program. His relationships are changing a lot over the course of the show, and I love it. And honestly, I think we're pushing towards AWOL John soon. I know they touched on it in the first episode, which was very strange, because like, they're very quick into like showing John splitting from the UNSC, but he kind of came back to them when he realized, okay, I need you, this is a bigger thing, bigger situation. But I think where they touched on his relationships of like who knows what, I think when the reveal comes to him that Keyes knows. I think I get the impression from the last two episodes anyway that that's a very important relationship for him. Um, that he has more of a relationship with um, Captain Keyes than he does with Halsey anyway. Uh, well, no, no, not with Halsey because obviously that relationship is now broken. That's obviously a very sore point for him as we see with this amazing scene of him pretty much letting her almost die. Uh, I love how the counter goes past zero and the shit's pumping in the room before he opens the door i thought like it'd be like you know one of those movie things where it's like oh two seconds or one second he's like no fucking let the shit pump in and then i'll get her so i thought that was great that was fantastic and i think there's a moment here where i think it might break him from the unsc i think there's more politics involved i want to see john being maybe a little bit more manipulated and i think with the introduction of mckee and them having a bit of relationship. And like I joked in the show of like, you know, almost kissing. I'm doing a kiss. There's a bit, there's a vibe there between these two characters that I think is fantastic. I mean, they, they definitely feel the connection with themselves in that moment. Because like this is not only this is the first time that John has seen the ring and, and kind of discovering what this is. But it's McKee's first time being there, too. Like she she's just as much as in awe as he is. And and the two of them share this connection that they both don't fully understand, even less so for Chief. Yeah, there is that kind of strange sort of tension that we kind of got just kind of, I think, from like movie trope, where they're like, oh, are they about to like kiss, <laughs> which really wouldn't make sense. But but they but definitely this... share this connection that will be very interesting to see how it develops, because on one, on one hand, you could have, you know, Chief wanting to use her to kind of get closer to his past, even though she doesn't like, she doesn't know anything directly, but because this indirect sort of connection, she could be like a key in that sense. Yeah, he's going to want to know, like, the, the thing that makes him different. Not necessarily his past, but let's say what he is genetically. Like, they touch on it here. So she seems to understand more being a blessed one than he, obviously humanities don't know. So I think he looks at her that way of, like, you know more than I do about this thing that we share, and I need to know. And and I, and I then on, on her side of things, it's like, okay, you're also a blessed one, so that means you must share some of the knowledge and, like, the goals that, like, I believe, and I think she's going to really try to pull him, not necessarily into the covenant, like maybe maybe it could be a thing where like the two, like she wants to be just with John and, and kind of do, I don't know, maybe they learn more about of like what the forerunners are and they want to, she wants to maybe pursue that. So then, you know, now we have John being pulled in these two or three different directions. Yeah, because like she's the same, and I feel like he has interesting motivations to split and to stay. She has interesting motivations to split and stay as well, because she's obviously hiding stuff from the Covenant as well, as we know from her story books and stuff like that. And there's elements of her own humanity that she's keeping, and I like that. Maybe she'll split from the Covenant. Maybe John will split from 
the UNSC. And I think that may be a season two, season three storyline. I could see these two characters having to split and go ahead. And then I think that's a wonderful time to bring in other Spartans to hunt John. I think I'd love to see that in the show. Uh, I've, I've seen that element. And maybe that's where um, a different branch comes up. Because we see like in the first couple of episodes of the show of like the committee and stuff being worried of like the Spartans were untouchable and infallible. And now we're seeing that's not true. Um, they're seeing their trust a little bit go down in, in, in terms of John and stuff like that, which is very interesting. So I wonder if there's elements there of a different uh section within only coming out or not like we said we don't think there's only yet but a different section coming out here of like okay where's our answers to the spartans like if we if a spartan goes wrong what do we do uh, i like the idea of maybe they set up something else and then that happens further down the line i mean there's just so much potential uh, that i can see happening in the in the first couple of shows and it all leads off the relationships between these people and i think they do it really well i think that's like one of the best things i think this timeline the silver timeline has going for it is like the relationship between these people is believable and really interesting. And like to even touch on what Kiki Wolfkill has even said in interviews is that like there's so much from the canon to pull. It's like, well, what stories do we pull to to tweak and kind of take inspiration from? And when you have all these great characters that that are just acted and portrayed just so well. Yeah, it's like where where do you want to take them? And you can, you can you can pull them in all these different sort of ways. And so to kind of see it unfold in this seemingly organic organic way, it, you know, working towards something. Yeah, I just again, I just want to see more of that. So yeah, like like you said, just the the acting in the in these characters and the relationships are really what's keeping this show together. But not not like it's falling apart, so to speak. But it's just like. It's not an action packed show. Yeah, they've they've really just they've really said that this is a character driven show and like it they've really done that, but it it's still for the most part, I mean, I have my own gripes here and there with with you know choices and things. In general, like yeah, I'm I'm kind of rooting for almost everybody to like do what they want to do and that's that's what you want cuz some characters, you know, they they conflict with others. So if you're rooting for both of them to achieve what they want to achieve but they're in opposition, that that's when you have an exciting show. So I like, and then you mentioned keys. Like I, I feel like we tr- we haven't really seen keys do what core cannon keys can do. Yeah, he he doesn't feel like he belongs just yet. He just he's not a big character. I'm a little bit disappointed with him in terms of he he's just he's not Jacob Keys. This is a totally different character. I don't get the impression he he's cut from the same cloth a little bit. And I'm also at the moment like I don't believe him and. Natasha and Macklemore have like any chemistry whatsoever. I just find it hard to believe that they had a child. Do you know what I mean? It just I don't believe it in in the context of the show. I believe uh, his daughter Miranda and Jacob, like their relationship is very interesting, and obviously there's and that's believable. But I just don't believe him and him and Natasha Macklemore at the moment. Yeah, no, I, I I definitely can understand that that point of view. Yeah, I've kind of, I kind of just accepted it, but you're right. Like there isn't even some type of underlying chemistry that like shows that they had a past. Like Halsey's still just like a hundred percent on in the now, preparing for the future, trying to learn as much as she can. And and Keys kind of just wants to protect Miranda. Is kind of a lot of what his screen time stuff is, and like protect himself. Uh, but I, what I was going to say about Key is like what I think what we potentially could get that we got a, just the taste of in this episode and in the last episode was like his direct relationship with John because John really trusts the Keys and and we had that great moment in episode five and we got a little bit of it in this episode and I'm curious to see how that might develop because I can see maybe Chief relying a little bit on Keys to I don't know further whatever aim that we're kind of getting later in the show. And depending upon how Keys reacts to that, could be very interesting. He could, he could stay true to what he's been kind of doing in in this show and kind of staying the military man and and reporting what he sees. Or maybe he sees something that Chief sees and wants to kind of get back at you know the UNSC or something. Or or he sees the greater good somewhere out there, and then Keys then can kind of help Chief achieve with whatever he's trying to do. So I think I think there's a relationship there that. That could develop into something more that I think we're just now finally seeing that I wish we just got earlier in the show, but you know, we, we just haven't really gotten that from keys yet. Let's see the, we have, uh, we have the great to kind of piggyback off Catherine Halsey, just in general, we had that great interrogation scene where 
it was kind of like a more judicial sequence that it kind of started with you know questioning the legalities of the spartan program and yeah a bit of politics going on here a bit of maneuvering with the committee and stuff but you can see perangoski kind of like setting up policy a bit um but there's good dialogue between her and keys here kind of explaining what they're on that he's like she's too smart for this and she's like i'm relying on that which I got the impression of that she was setting up Halsey to be like the scapegoat, but with full belief that Halsey would get out of it and therefore she could just like get away with it, whatever. Uh, and I like that. I, that's the impression I got from this. And then, like you said in the commentary, a little bit disappointing that it got cut short. I kind of wanted to see a little bit more where it would go. and But it was it was, it was a good scene before it became interrupted and it became a great scene. Yeah, then I mean, the scene, the greatness still continues, so to speak. With Chief coming in there and just being like, I need answers. I've been trying to get them for three episodes now, and now you're going to tell me. Like, and that's just it. And we get the we get basically the the explanation of the birth of the program that we've been hinted at for the last couple of episodes. And of course, you know, most most Halo fans that are familiar with the Fall of Reach novel do know and and kind of learn about. So I I'm happy that we finally got that as an audience member. I'm glad she told him like straight away. Told him. And there was no lies there. I, I was impressed with that. It, and it's not just like a flashback that was just like explaining it all. Like even even though you do, you know, as, as a visual medium, you know, it is always better to show and not tell. But like sometimes the way things are told are just as powerful. And and I agree that like her, you know, looking up to John because John John doesn't really sit down or he gets up halfway through it. And so she's in this very like defensive point of view and he's towering over her and she's just like telling it to him like this is this is what we did this is my belief this is why we did it and then he's and then he's he's like oh well you're selfish and you're this you're that and he's just like well but yes but i kind of don't see it that way because of x y and z and and so like that they just really play off each other just so well and it's just i don't know it was very rewarding like once once i finally saw that like for me i just was like wow that was that was a great way to be told that information that, yes, I, I've, you know, you and I and, you know, other deep lore fans are very familiar with. But to kind of see it unfold in this way, I felt like was just as powerful. And it was great to a uh, way for like John to to experience that because I I was talking with another one of the guests and like I, I don't really think that the Spartans know what, like what took place. Oh, no, they, they definitely imply that like they wipe memories here. Well, I mean, I mean, no, that's what I'm saying. And like core and core canon, like like our Master Chief and Halo Infinite, like like they they may have a little bit of an idea of kind of like what went on, but they kind of just brush it off or don't really think too much of. They all remember. They know that they were stolen. Really? I don't. I th- I didn't think that they were at least not specifically. Like so, some of them were young. Like some of them were weren't six. Like some of them were a little bit younger. I remember that being like there's a slight age variation between two of them. So like some of them might act, not actually remember, but like most of them know that they were taken. They were that's where Halsey came out and she said there was that scene in, in Reach where she was talking to Mendez, going like I can't, I'm not going to lie to these 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 children. I'm going to tell them. So she gets up and delivers her speech, which is like these six year olds aren't going to understand this, but you know they're actually like intelligent humans. Do you know what I mean? They're that's why they were selected for like the whole genetics and stuff. So like. She explained to them exactly what happened. I took you. Do you know what I mean? You were taken for this. You have great purpose. You're going to be this. I'm going to make you into Spartans, make you into these incredible heroes. And that was like her selling it to them. So like they definitely knew there there was no like memory wipe, which they clearly did here and, and are covering up. Which I think is fine. And I like that difference because it gives us the emotional reveal then. We, get, we have the Spartans like you have Kai and John actually caring that they were taken, do you know what I mean? And the flash cloning and oh, how that was explained. That was all marvelous. Well, another another thing about flash cloning and all that, like it's Cortana seems to be like the only smart AI in this show. That's interesting. I haven't even thought of that actually. Yeah. To flash clone a brain and to make it into a smart AI is, is and like to use a real brain when someone dies, that's kind of commonplace in the core canon. But like this, we we see is like kind of the inception of it. So like the whole idea and ethics surrounding like cloning and and biological sort of like manipulation and all that kind of stuff is all new to the silver timeline here. So then that's why the the politics of it, you know, it it makes it interesting because it's all new and we're trying to figure it all out. 
instead of it already being established and we have those rules set in place where we're seeing it unfold on screen and that kind of just adds that extra drama. We kind of touched on McKee. I guess I guess the ending here, we can kind of move on to the 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 impactfulness of the ending and what we think it kind of means cuz it innately just kind of creates just more questions within the context of the show. So we have John succumbing to the artifact after he usually kind of releases. Is that McKee gave him that key piece of information of what to do? And then he does it. But I guess it's curious is that like if this is McKee's first time seeing the ring, then I wonder what she sees when she succumbed to the artifact. Because when because the prophets wanted her to just hold on to it as long as she needed to. So she kind of had to figure that out on herself. She didn't really have a choice like John had over the last few episodes. So I'm curious to see and learn like what she saw. If this is the first time she's singing, or maybe this isn't the first time she's singing the ring. Maybe she has been here before. I get the impression that it is that it was her first time on the ring, but they, they seem to know that they're looking for a ring. Do you know what I mean? They seem to she seems to know what the keystones do and their purpose, uh, which is kind of interesting. And that like she theoretically, no, I guess she had no time with the larger artifact actually, because as soon as they stole it, they dropped her down. So there was no element. We didn't get anything to see of what she could do with the large one. And then on top of that, I'm kind of thinking out loud now that John sees his past, but not just his past, a specific moment within it, which is where he saw the first keystone. So I, I wonder, does like is the smaller part of the keystone telling him, here's the big one that you saw earlier, go there and bring me there. I, I'm getting the impression that it's only that specific memory set that it unlocks for him for that purpose. Yeah, because he has a history with the the larger stone. But I wonder now is this John's acceptance of the device and like she says, they work for me. I wonder is this now, he is now able to control Forerunner tech, actually do something with it other than just flash memories and freak out. Like in the first episode when he grabs the artifact and it like kills the whole power to Yeah, it was reacting to what he needed. Yeah, but like, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what at what point will he now have a conscious decision to to do what he wants the artifact to do or to do a different type of device to do, whether it's a light bridge or whatever, um, or an activation index, for example. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see what type of kind of mental abilities he's able to unlock now that he's more or less one with the artifact, if you will. But like, so where where do you think, now that we're getting towards the end of this, this season... Like, where do you think it goes from here? Like, how we have three episodes left. They see the ring. Like, I I honestly don't really know. I could believe, like, there, we're still, there's a lot of stumbling. And this is kind of where the show is, right? Obviously, Forerunner tech is not prevalent in human space. This cle- this is clearly the first piece of Forerunner tech the humans have ever seen, right? So it's not like Halsey's been working on it or, like, you know, we had in Reach is where they kind of, I think they first found um, Siren's Grad, kind of found the first thing, the whole latchkey discovery kind of stuff. And that obviously was our first more or less kind of foray into Forerunners, like a non-covenant race of sentient beings and stuff with advanced technology. So I'm intriguing to see like how fast the show is going to go. I'm hoping we, are we getting to the ring, ring physically in this season? Maybe not. I think it's possible that like maybe the end of the season is bringing the two pieces of the Keystones together. And then that's the case of whatever that reveals might be the end of show. That that's possible, I think. Uh, I almost hope it is. I almost don't want to get to the Halo in season one. That might it seems a little bit too fast. And then obviously things would escalate very quickly. That would actually time out, I think, very well with the fact that they they greenlit season two ahead of season one's launch. Like I kind of like that idea where season one would end with. The key, the two keystones coming together, whether it's the UNSC doing it or the Covenant doing it, and it basically showing the destination or the location of the ring, and then that's basically where the cliffhanger is. And it's like, okay, now everybody is going to the ring, and like that's that's what the second season is now up. It's basically the race to the ring and the fight over the ring, you know, because because the UNSC still think it might be a weapon that they can use. They, you know, they still don't know why the Forerunner has built it and what it truly does. They're just going off of an assumption. Yeah, and I'm also wondering in this timeline, is the Flood a thing? Like, do we get there and the, the reveal of 
is the is the ring what it was in in our timeline? Maybe not. Maybe the ring isn't what everyone thinks it is. Like us outside of the show think it is. I mean, and that's really interesting to me. The fact that forerunner technology could be different. I mean, I don't even think we have the word forerunner hasn't even been said in the show. So like, who really knows who built it or what it's for? I think Miranda or Halsey, when they were doing their own research of the artifact, they made. I think it was Miranda actually. They made some sort of note that there's there is some sort of like thing or sentience that is like communicating with John. A few, uh, both both of them said that, yeah. Yeah, so like they they do recognize that, and I think it it eventually will eventually get there. I don't know. I I can see this being like a pretty cool space opera, and they they just go. I really hope they lean into it because like the forerunners in the flood, like like there's so much of like Halo lore that's buried into all of that. And I think you could you could just you could implement that into the show. I mean, yes, it'll take time. I mean, like the whole Forerunner trilogy is just a massive amount of like super complex like like ideologies and like ways like it's it's a hard series or hard trilogy to read for some fans because it's like so hardcore space sci-fi as opposed to the more militaristic sci-fi of the other novels. So I, I do think there could be definitely a different way of introducing the forerunners and and you have to develop their way of life and and all this kind of stuff so then you can kind of get the general pieces if if not like you know the the mantle and the domain and like all all these other sort of complex thing you know living time (laughs) like you know like but i think i think you can still develop and introduce the kind of basic like overview of the forerunners and the flood and the sentience and why we're fighting to have, you know, a complete story. Cause like at the end of the day, like I, there's not like, since this is its own timeline, when the show ends, like that's going to be the end of the show. Like, unless they do spinoffs and stuff, but like, I kind of see this being like a three or four season story, if not more. And it's just like, it's going to be like a, a breaking bad or like a stranger things or something or a lost. And it's like, that's the story contained within this TV show. I know the Showtime did say they they did make references to Game of Thrones of like this is their push for that. Now, obviously, this show I don't think is anywhere near what Game of Thrones did uh, or could do. But like they, this could go longer. Do you know what I mean? This this could go as long as they wanted to. Uh, I don't know if the show really has the legs for it though. That's the thing. So I hope they do make it self contained and, and bring it in a bit. I don't know, do you need to go ancient human routes? Do you know what I mean? I don't know if you need to do that, do all that stuff. But, but let's just see, it could it could just be Forerunner versus Flood, and I think I'd be fine with that, to be honest. And they, they made the rings because of the Flood and stuff. I mean, if you look at the original Halo trilogy, like, basically, it starts off with being Humanity versus Covenant. And that's kind of the first game, and we stop the ring from destroying all life in the galaxy. And then the second game gets further complex with the inner politics of the covenant and we have the heretics and we have the brutes coming in the changing of the guards and then eventually the schism in halo 3 but then we're also fighting the covenant on earth and now there's the flood and so it it ultimately accumulates to the chief and the arbiter needing to stop the flood from like infecting the galaxy so like that type of story is pretty contained within the trilogy like if you didn't have any other halo media to kind of like flesh all of that out, it's it's still pretty contained and there's a beginning, middle, and an end. And I feel like the show will have to do something to that effect to where there's a beginning, middle, and the end. And once once we save the galaxy, then it's, you know, it's saved. But they've said they don't want to just recreate the game, so we're not going to get just Halos 1, 2, and 3. They're going to, you know, implement their own thing. There's also huge theories out there that that Brute was Atriox and that we're going to get the Banished, so then it ties with Halo Infinite which would be a very bold decision in my opinion but it's it's not no way that's not that's i mean it's possible but <laughs> if anything that's tartarus i think that it's it's more possible that it's tartarus than it is any other brute to be honest cuz i they i they made such a big deal keeping this separate timeline separate trying to tie this into the show into infinite i think would be well, necess- not necessarily would be tie it in but just like make it familiar so it's like oh if you're watching the tv show and it's about and there's banished people in there well if you go play the game you can go fight banished people like it's just kind of making the two relevant in the same sort of time space even though yeah they wouldn't really be influencing or relating to each other but 
anyway, that shows it. That was just a fan theory that I was reading online. But my point is, is that I think this show as a whole, once we start thinking about multiple seasons, will be its own contained thing at the end of the day. And it's just a matter of how how much or no, how long the legs are. That, like you said, whether is it a, is it a three season arc? Is it a five season arc? Or do we get our seven seasons with you know the seven being you know the Halo number? which I think is very ambitious. I feel like this is more of like a four-season show, just based off what we have right now. I, it, gets, it gets three and gets cancelled. <laughs> I could see that, like, on the back of, like, okay, season two got greenlit before season one came out. That shows confidence. That shows a level of belief of what they had seen of season one and were like, oh, yeah, okay, you need another season to keep going. For me, then, given, like, obviously the expense of the show, and I don't think there's elements of the show that don't look very expensive, and that's kind of uh, disappointing. So I think season two has to bring the heat, do you know what I mean, to get a season three time. I don't know if they'll see season two and and greenlit season three straight away. Do you know what I mean? I think at at that point, uh, Paramount Plus will be open to more places in the world. Um, It'll be over here. So I wonder if they'll wait and see the numbers of what the show will actually do when it has a bigger audience which is kind of uh, my worry too. But I don't know. I think people will calm down by the end of season one, uh, to be honest, of like, it's not this, it's not this, not my chief, blah, blah, blah. But I, I think they did a fantastic job of setting Paolo as John. I, I Like I said in the analysis, I'm a little bit disappointed with Cortana at the moment, but I guess the show was so focused on him. Um, their story needs to come into it a little bit somewhere else. She's she's too young, too naive, too inexperienced, and there's just not a whole lot there between her and John. Um, and she's not doing a whole lot, so that's kind of a little bit disappointing. But I, I'm guessing that's going to lead up to something. I would think it does. Like just kind of thinking about story structure and like that. Yes, and that's such as that's such an integral part of Halo is Chief and Cortana's relationship. But I feel like we just need to get there. Like we kind of are already there by the time we're playing the first game. And we get a little bit of that in, like, the Fall of Reach book of, like, them kind of learning who they are. But, like, you know, by Halo 4 and Halo 5, like, there's such a connection that, like, we needed all these games to do that we're definitely not going to get that in the first season. Yeah, I I can see season two being basically the the building blocks of their relationship if, like, season one is just, like, the foundation. Uh, I'm all in anyway. Well, before we wrap up, I just want to ask, what what's your general impression? We've kind of touched on it here and there, but is there anything specifically you want to touch on of the season as a whole so far? The first six episodes, or I guess the first five since since we've been talking about episode six for so long now. Is there anything you that you liked or you didn't like that you that you you know want the opportunity to discuss before we we wrap out here? And um, you know, we've already really touched on what we're looking forward to. But, you know, maybe if that translates to what might occur in the next last episode, since we're kind of getting the near end of it all, uh, how how would you like to, you know, respond to it? I guess, um, it's like I said, I'm not, I don't love the show, but there's, there's bits in the show I do love. Uh, I like it overall. I think the most interesting thing it does are the differences, which I really like. Uh, I like how different it is. Uh, there's elements that are the same. I think the sets are amazing. Uh, the acting is actually really good. I think the casting is really good for the most part. Um, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, of Keys, to be honest. Uh, there's relationships there I, I believe and don't believe. Parnowski is amazing. Um, there, there's just so many characters. It's good. I love seeing the rubble. I love the dip, the places where the, the show goes. It goes to them very quickly. Uh, but I, I guess, you know, it is a nine episode season. You know, it's got to do a whole lot. Uh, and I think they're doing a great job of it, to be perfectly honest. I don't. I wonder what it was like coming in knowing nothing about Halo and seeing this show. Uh, I'd love to talk to someone about that and just see what they think. Because obviously we're burdened with knowledge that could potentially ruin different things in the show. King and like, like, like I said, I don't like Keys because of how much I love actual Jacob Keys. Um, to be honest with you, and like I said, he was a one game character, but it was just so great in the lore surrounding it uh, that made him so strong. Uh, and but again, I I do like that they what they've done with Miranda to keep her in that she's not, that she's a doctor scientist and stuff like that. I I do like that. But um, they they might as well have just called them different people to be honest uh, and just gone away with it. What else do we have to do? Uh, Soren and the rubble, like Quan's story. That I was interested in that at the start. I don't see their relevance anymore. Uh, which is weird. Like this episode literally killed that storyline for me caring about it. Of like, okay, now this is where I, I am, and I'm like. Do, do we really care about Soren? Do we really care about Quan? I'm not sure of their importance yet, to be perfectly honest. 
they were good and interesting together. She was a bit annoying, but her all like, I have to get the rebels, I have to get the rebels, 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 rebels. I'm like, just, you know, get over it. It's done. Uh, it, I, I like, so anyway, I just, I'm intrigued to see where that goes, but I'm not as invested as I am now because season six, uh, episode six kind of killed that for me, to be honest, which just because it was so good and where, where it did show me. If, if the next episode goes back to Quan and Sora, and I'm going to be like, no, go back to John and get, get, get me back there, you know? Uh, other than that, I think I've already touched on, I'm not hot in the music, a couple of key elements, I was a bit disappointed with there. But other than that, the show overall, I think it's pretty good. I, I'm excited, I'm invested. I, I do like where it's headed. And I, like I said, like I, I was on the edge of my seat in that last scene and was just like, hot damn like i can't wait for the next week so well david thank you so much for joining me listeners if you're otherwise unfamiliar david also appears on our mission debrief episodes with uh colin and the rest of the crew over there talking about halo infinite right now and the deep story beats and action sequences of the game you can listen to that on evolves various podcasting platforms if you're interested in Alex Waitford, uh, who is Herespis with 343, he releases a silver debriefing blog every Monday. And this blog is a source to recap the story of each episode in detail, serve as a hub for additional show-related content, and provide some more detailed insight into certain other things. And if you want to read the silver debriefing blog for Solace, you can head over to Halo Waypoint now to check it out. David, thank you for joining me again. No problem. Thanks for having me, Orn. We will have to give you back on the show for a retrospective of the whole season. Where I need to, I need to start talking about the logistics of that with everybody else who I've had on the show. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you, the listener, for listening for another week of Halo TV+. Plus. Halo the Series premieres exclusively on Paramount Plus every Thursday morning at midnight Pacific Time. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, you can find every episode to all of the shows that Evolve produces on our website, EvolvedHalo.com. It also features links to our Discord server, Patreon page, Xbox Live Club, and other contact information. Once again, another special shout out to all of our patrons for supporting Evolved and making all of our shows possible. Head over to Patreon.com slash Halo Evolved to learn more. And finally, if you want to leave us an email or a voicemail, about this week's Halo the Series episode, you can email us at podcastevolved at gmail.com or you can give us a call at 205-EVOLVED, which is 205-386-5833. And with that, I've been your host, Oren, and until next time, Evolved! Evolved!